we, I, I have at most probably 90 minutes of questioning myself. I hope I have less. With these next three? With these three. Okay. The food is supposed to get here at noon. Okay. Let's say, we're, so wherever you're at, we'll probably break. Okay. And that's probably about a half hour, a little different than yesterday. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. you and think you'll still have some more? Yes, Judge, after. Because after that's your part, it's not even. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, I, I think this next witness will get us to the food. We'll have to break during his testimony okay. on direct. Okay. That's fine, yeah. All right. Okay. Okay, record will reflect. Jury's back in the courtroom. Further evidence for the state. Nathaniel Schaefer. Oh, is that you? You solemnly swear that you, your hand, right hand's raised. You solemnly swear the testimony you will now give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, Your Honor. Have a seat right up there. Am I supposed to be doing it? No, no, no. I was just trying to be prepared so I wasn't. Okay, delayed. and you're operating off of your laptop. Yeah, right? and okay. unfortunately, I could not get something to open. If I could have one moment, I apologize. All right. Sorry, Judge. Okay, proceed. Could you please state your name? Nathaniel Schaefer. And how are you employed? Trooper with the Missouri State Highway Patrol. And how long have you been with the Missouri State Highway Patrol? Just under 11 years. And what are your current duties and responsibilities? Uh, I'm a criminal investigator for the Division of Drug and Crime Control. And how long have you been involved in, in as a criminal investigator with the Highway Patrol? Uh, just under four years. And did you become involved in the homicide investigation of Benjamin Reddick? Yes. And did you take over that case somewhat as the case agent? I did. And that was much longer after the murder had already occurred. Correct. As part of that, did you review uh, the entire police file? I did. And as, did that file contain uh, social messages and text messaging and, and, and phone records of, of various individuals? Yes. Uh, did they include records of Lindley Rannick and Ben Rannick? Yes. And Michael Humphrey? Correct. And from that, did you obtain also uh, business record affidavits from these companies to, to obtain those, or you may not have, did someone obtain business record affidavits from these companies to, to verify they were in fact their records? Yes, typically they send it when they send the, the records. And as a result of that, uh, did you ultimately put together and review, or uh, put together a PowerPoint presentation, but review some of these records to see, first of all, what type of financial discussions Lindley and Ben were having? Yes also to see if there were marital issues in some of these. Correct. And also, you, I think you put together, a, a timeline was put together of all her, her being Lindley's activity on phone and social media the day that Ben was murdered. Correct. Now, 
<clears throat> I want to show you starting with, well, let's, let's knock out a couple little things first. Uh, as part of this investigation, you ultimately learned that a gas purchase was made uh, prior to Ms. Rennick and Michael Humphrey leaving Columbia to go out and allegedly murder her husband. Yes. Uh, and as a result of that, did you contact, uh, a, a, I think it's Philip 66 or these gas companies to try and determine from the bank record what gas station was listed by that company as number 49 in its location? Yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as state's exhibit. Is this 84 or 89? I think it's 84, correct? Okay. State's exhibit 84. And ask if you can identify what that is. That's 11. Yes. That's a list of the locations of the gas stations. Basically, it's th they provided you with a list of, I don't know, how many different gas stations that are numbered in their location and phone numbers, correct? Correct. Your Honor, I'd offer State's Exhibit 84. Any objection? No, Your Honor. 84 is admitted. And does, is there a gas station listed as number 49? There is. And where is that one located at according to this company? Uh, this address is 5481 East St. Charles Road, Columbia, Missouri. And is that on... Uh, Commonly referred to located at the Lake of the Woods exit? Yes. It's on the eastern side of Columbia along I-70. Correct. I'm going to also show you, well, as part of your investigation, did you learn that Ms. Rennick's spa was in some what of a financial trouble? Yes. And either at the time of the homicide or afterwards, she was sued by a number of individuals related to the operation of that spa, bills not being paid, that sort of thing. Correct and you obtained those lawsuits. Correct. Or the basic information. Correct. States Exhibit 68, is that a lawsuit where Capital Bank is actually suing Ms. Rennick? Yes. I'm sorry, Tim, did you want to? Yeah, I'll take one, so I'll need to have that. just those certified copies that were provided. No problem. States Exhibit 71, does this involve a rent possession action by Corona Properties against Essentia Spas? Yes. 74, is this a show me heating and air conditioning suing Essentia Spas for work equipment provided? Yes. And 76 and 78, are they a tax lien basically by the Department of Revenue placed against that spa? Yes. Your Honor, I would offer states exhibits. Yeah, now just do it one at a time here. 68? Okay, any objection? No, Your Honor. 68's admitted. And what else? 71? Any objection? No, Your Honor. 71's admitted. 74? No, Your Honor. No objection to 74. 76? Any objection? No, Your Honor. And 78. No All right, objection. just a minute. Oh, sorry, Judge. Okay, no objection to 78? Correct, Your Honor. Okay, let me, let me make sure I got this. Uh, states exhibit 68, 71, 74, 76, 78 are admitted. And, and Judge, if you're, just to clarify for the record and for what you're looking at, I think when we did the exhibit list, we expected to get those various items separately from the clerk. They came packaged together, that's why if you look at the exhibit list, numbers are being skipped. All right, I, I got it. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> now, in addition to that, we mentioned uh, you you working on some PowerPoints, correct? Correct. And this, I'm gonna show you State's Exhibit 99. And this is a CD, which I believe contains the business record affidavit and all the actual records and the PowerPoint that we discussed a few minutes ago pertaining to some of those financial and marital conversations that Ms. Rennick and her husband were having. Correct. And, and is that, that's what's contained on 99, the, the CD. Yes, sir. And then there's a paper copy of the PowerPoint. Correct. Your Honor, I would offer into evidence State's Exhibit 99. Any objection? No, Your Honor. 99 be admitted. And Judge, if, with your permission, I'd like to go through. There's 78 slides. I don't intend to go through all of them. I intend to use a few of them as representative. Okay. Now, you're talking about 99? 
99. There's okay. 78 slides. Okay, and you're using the um, laptop there? Correct. Okay. And, and Nat, I, or Trooper Schaefer, I think you can either go on, follow along on paper. It might be easier to look at the screen as yep. you jump, jump from slide to slide. This first slide is number three, and it indicates a, a date that uh, some, some exchanges between Ben and Lindley occurred. Correct. Is that, what is the date and time? Uh, February 2nd, 2017, uh, between 10.01 and 10.11. And is this information that Ben is sending either by text or Facebook messaging messenger to Lindley? I believe it's Facebook. And can you describe what, what this slide contains or is showing us? Basically, they're talking about their budget. And this is five, four or five months prior to his murder. Correct. I'm going to have you jump to six, or I'm going to jump to six, and we see a, a message dated what? February 7th. And this is, who's, who is contacting who in this message? Lindley is contacting Ben. And she is asking Ben a question. She's asking uh, if he had heard, heard from Robin about the purchase of the, the snake business. Well, it says, the, the question is actually, have you heard from Robin? Correct. And so I was going to ask you, from your investigation, do you believe you know who Robin is referring to? Yes. Who is that? The NHL player, Robin Leonard. And the jury's heard, but this you believe this is possibly in reference to uh, the snake sale that Ben is involved in? Correct. You, from your investigation, you never, other than snakes, you never knew of any connection to a Robin to the case than the one we just discussed? No. I'm going to jump ahead to 18. And, and while we move through some of these, uh, as we get closer to the date of his murder, <coughs> A lot of these conversations, there's multiple conversations that are similar, are there not? Correct. And I think we're not going to talk about all of them. I mean, the defense is free to, but I just want to point out a few and give an example. Okay. On, on slide 18, could you tell us the date? March 27th. And this starts out with the way you've, we put this together. Who is communicating to who at the beginning? Lindley is talking to Ben. And then he, we have his responses there, correct? Correct. And, and what are they discussing on 18? Uh, again, talking about money. Um, Lindley's talking about how much money she needs to basically keep uh, the spa. And then Ben is talking about basically how much money they're putting into the business and how much money they're spending and, and basically bleeding out. And, and that is at what time of day? Uh, in the morning. And I'm gonna, this conversation goes on, and, and they have conversations kind of that we're going to talk about that maybe start in the morning and go on all day is I, presumably each of them are maybe at work talking to each other through this messaging. Correct. I'm going to jump to 20, which is a later part to some extent of that conversation. Is that fair? Yes. And, and the, the, the lower level, Ben is uh, the second, I guess, paragraph I'd call it, of uh, Ben is speaking to Lindley. Correct. And is he talking, what is he talking to her or informing her of? How much money that they're spending on the spa. I'm going to jump to 23. We're still on the same date, are we not? Correct. And again, uh, is this, this is a little bit later in the day, it appears to be a carry on of the same conversation. Correct. And, and in the second paragraph again, who is communicating to who? Ben to Lindley. And, and what is he communicating to her at this time? Uh, he's basically saying that he will help her, but she's not letting him help, not giving him information so that he can help her. And going down, when Lynn, Lynn responds back to Ben, does he not? Yes. And what does he say? Uh, or she it? say, I'm sorry. She asks if uh, she should call Chuck. And I don't think this jury has heard the name Chuck in this case before. Do you do you know from, from the basic investigation who Chuck is and what his relationship to Ben Lindley was? Yes. Who is that? Uh, Chuck Thal was like Ben's financial advisor. Um, ben had a, a trust, and whenever he needed money from the trust, he would contact Chuck Thal, and Chuck Thal would be the person who would put it into process so that Ben could get the money back. 
Did he, were you aware that whether he provided financial advice to both of them for both of their businesses? Yes, he did. I'm going to jump ahead to 26. What is the date on that slide? April 21st. And is Ben informing Lindley of some news? Yes. And what is the news? Uh, that she wasn't paying her bills. I'm going to jump to slide 28. What is the date on 28? June 3rd. So we're about five days prior to his murder. Correct. And what is who is communicating here? To Again, Ben Lindley. Ben Lindley? Yes. And what is he informing her of or talking to her about? She's not paying her bills still. Slide 36. What is the date on this slide? June 5th. And could you, this is a couple days then before Ben is murdered. And is there a conversation of more, maybe related to some financial, but a little bit about some friction apparently that is going on between the relation, in the relationship? Correct. And, and what, can you describe that, that conversation as you've seen it in this document? Uh, basically, Ben is asking if it, Lindley even likes him. Um, she says yes, she loves him. Uh, and then she says that she feels unsafe and doesn't trust that uh, he won't take his aggression out on her. Uh, and then he says he's never done anything to make her feel that way. And I guess each spouse can have different opinions of each other's behavior sometimes. Correct. Slide 38. This is dated what? June 6th. And it's from, who, who is communicating to whom? Ben Dillonley. And what has been informing him on the, her on the morning of June 6th, two days before he is murdered? Uh, that he's supposed to get uh, $200,000 uh, towards the purchase of the snake business. So this puts information into Lindley's mouth about a large amount of money that is expected to arrive. Correct. States exhibit or slide 43. Uh, what date is this later on that same date? Uh, I don't remember if the other one was June 6th or 5th, but yeah, I'm sorry, the, the, without going back, it was June 6th in the okay. morning, hour, early yep. morning hours. Yep, so this is in, at what time of day on the same date? Uh, 3 40 to 6 55 p.m. And we see a name Catherine involved in this text exchange, yes, and uh, who is Catherine? If or do you believe you know who Catherine is and what they're referring to here? Uh, I believe it's the babysitter. Sorry. Yeah, and do you know what they're referring to? That's come. Why, why there would be communication with the babysitter? Uh, they're trying to set up a date night for, uh, I believe, the eighth. Now, states exhibit forty-six. We're backing up a little bit to talk a little bit more about the relationship. Uh, chronologically speaking so to speak yep. we're back in may now correct and, and this 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 46 this slide is dated what may 17th and what has been communicating to lindley on this date uh basically their relationship issues um talking about like the title of it says their sex life well if you go down to the second bullet point where Ben is communicating, that, that, that first sentence there, if you could read, read that to yourself and does that refresh what they're communicating about here? Yeah, basically they're not having sex. Ben feels like there's, she doesn't have any interest in it. Correct. And we, we haven't gone, and I don't intend to go through every slide, but this day kicks off a long and lengthy conversation argument between the two of them about their sex life and their personality all kinds of different stuff correct and they talk about do they not about uh, a sexual uh, an incident of sexual assault or abuse that Lindley believes Ben uh, performed or, or caused upon her yes and I think that's the very next slide which is 47 uh, after she Ben complains to her about not feeling loved or wanted in my words uh, Lindley responds, does she not? Yes. And I, I don't need you to tell me, I read it all, but does she complain and reference this sexual assault? Issue? She does. And what does she describe uh, the incident as having been to Ben? 
Uh, basically, he tried to have sex with her while she was sleeping, and she woke up with his fingers inside of her. And she did not like that. Correct. And again, this conversation goes on and on, I mean, for a lengthy time. Correct. They talk about whether they should go to counseling, things of that nature. Correct. But at the end of it, states to give it 52. Uh, does does, ben, does Lindley say anything to Ben to reassure him? Um, Re read the, well, but whether it's reassuring slide. or not, read her first statement later on from Lindley to Ben that's on that. Okay, yeah, she, she says she still loves him. And does she tell him she'd been faithful in so many words? Yes. What does she say? Uh, this literally has nothing to do with anybody else. And well, before that, she says there never has been anyone else. Correct. And again, this conversation goes on for quite a while. Correct. You were aware uh, that uh, Ashley Shaw ha ha has reported to law enforcement and told this jury about an incident she was involved with Lindley and poisoning Ben, correct? Yes. Were there text messages or messaging between the two of them that referenced that? Uh, between the two of who? Between, Li I'm sorry, between Lindley and Ben referencing that incident? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I threw Ashley out there. I think I confused you. I'm going to move to 74. What date is this slide? June 2nd. And on this slide, what is uh, Lindley referring to? What does Lindley say to Ben? Well, let me do it this way. She references this poisoning incident, correct? Correct. And this is actually, at this incident, or what she's referencing here is not only that, but this, bad question. She's already talked, or there had been a conversation in late May, May 27th, about this sexual assault incident. Correct. But in June 2nd, she's also uh, describing having great sex with Ben, is she not? Correct. If you could read that first exchange from Lonely to Ben uh, on June 2nd, I would thank okay. you for it. Uh, Lindley says, what do I do to make you feel that way? What am I not doing outside of sex to make you feel that way? And we had crazy amazing sex before both of us almost died from food poisoning. I don't shy away from you cuddling with me or touching me. Now I want to also go to the last slide in this 78. What is the date of this slide? June 7th. And who initiates the conversation on this date? Lindley to Ben. And what does she ask him on June 7th? Well, this is the day before Ben is murdered. Correct. What does she ask Ben the day before he is murdered. When does Phil come? And from the investigation, you recognize Phil's, Phil's the rat guy. Supplies, Correct. Supplies, I guess, thousands of rats for these Correct. thousands of snakes. And she's asking Ben the day before he's murdered when he shows. Correct. Does Ben respond? Yes. What does he say? Uh, 12 to 1, typically. And then he asks why with the question mark and exclamation point. And what does Lindley reference then? Uh, just wondering. And then she talks about their date. Now, <clears throat> you also prepared a PowerPoint of the social media activity of Ms. Rennick on the day her husband was murdered, correct? Correct. And that includes basically all her phone calls, all her text messages, any social messaging on on mess, Facebook Messenger, all that stuff. Correct. And you, you weren't necessarily able to get, when it came to text messages, the actual text message, just that the text was sent sometimes. Correct. Uh, you were able to get the messages off of Facebook sometimes. Yes. And you weren't able to get the substance of the phone calls, just maybe when they occurred and maybe the duration. Correct. I'm going to show you what's been marked at States Exhibit 85 and ask if... Same question I asked you about the earlier one. Is 85 a CD that contains basically the business record affidavit for all these records, the records themselves, and then a PowerPoint presentation? Yes. 
And is there also a paper copy of the PowerPoint presentation? There is. Your Honor, I would offer States Exhibit 85. No objection. No objection to 85. 85 is admitted. <coughs> and Judge, again, could I go through this? I, yeah, I think it's, did, have you started it? No, I just wanted to ask. I think I it's ready to go. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to ask. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> On the first, uh, I'm going to pull up the messages from the first slide. At what time of morning does Lindley begin texting that morning? Uh, 6.13. And who is she initially texting with? Michael Humphrey. And does she ask him at 6.14 uh, a question through a text message? Yes. And some of these are actually from not her phone, but Mike, Michael's phone. They're all put together. Correct. And what does she ask him at 6.14 a.m. that morning? If he's going to make it to Columbia. Does he respond at 6.16? He does. And what does he respond? Uh, he's got to wait for the parts to get there. And what does she reply to that? Uh, she asks him, what are you thinking? And did, does she reply or send him another text? Yep, she says that she can talk on the phone in 20 minutes. And do they basically say, give me a call? Yep. Does she call Michael Humphrey at that morning? She does. And how long do they speak that morning? 11 minutes. And after that call, does she, or at some point does, during that call, I guess, does she receive a contact from someone else? Yes, from Ben. And tell us what Ben and her begin kind of discussing that morning. Uh, they're talking about their day and talking about their date that they're supposed to have. And at 6.45, Ben has sent her a video. Yep. I think he does that a couple times. Correct. And when, you, you, you actually were able to see these videos. Yes. What were these videos that Ben was sending her of? I don't recall. He sent a lot of videos of him messing with the snakes. It was always like snakes type yeah. stuff. It wasn't anything from him to her of a sexual nature. Correct. You had mentioned Ben and her continued this conversation. And are they just kind of some way, I guess, like husband and wife, hey, how's your day going? That sort of tough talk is going on. Yes. But she does get in contact again at 702 with whom? Uh, Michael Humphrey. And she, she tells him what? Uh, she's heading to Columbia, and then she says that Ashley, presumably Ashley Shaw, is a nervous wreck. And does she include, I don't know what you call that, an abbreviation that's common on the internet? Yes. And what is that? LOL or laugh out loud. And, and does she add that somebody else apparently, uh, or she, she then sends a message to, to Ben in response to his earlier question about who was working, so to speak? Correct. And he asked how busy she was, that kind of thing. Yes. At 7.04, this slide contains a, a series of messages between Ben and Lindley, correct? Correct. And, and what are they discussing? Uh, just how busy the spa is going to be, and then uh, Ben actually asks if she's upset with him because she's short. And again, it's kind of a common, maybe, conversation that maybe spouses have with each other when they're communicating in this manner. Correct. And this conversation continues through 713, does it not? Yes. At 714, Lindley receives a text message from Michael. Correct. And this was in response to a previous text she had sent him. Yes. And, and what was, she says what? Uh, boo, no, I understand. And, and what text message is that in reference to that she's responding to? Uh, not 100% sure without going back. It, maybe the head to Columbia, I'm, I'm not sure. Having to do maybe with that car and that's the yeah. car parts of that sort of being yeah. a, unsure. <clears throat> the two of them, Lindley and Michael, then begin a text message, correct? Correct. And in this, can you tell the jury what the two of them are discussing at this point in time? Uh, basically how tired they are. 
Um, well, at 719, Lindley says something is exhausting. Yeah, she said, I never knew how exhausting this was going to be. Um, and he says he's laid back. And does he offer her a, I guess, retreat from her problem, so to speak? Yes. And, and do you understand what he's communicating to her there? Yes. But what is he trying to communicate to her? Uh, a mound of pillow or like possibly a, a hit of meth or something. <coughs> and then Lindley goes to describe, I guess, her... Her morning at Starbucks. Correct. And then this conversation continues here. Correct. And it, that, that basic conversation ends between them when they're talking about the bound of pillows and what happened at Starbucks at 742, correct? Yes. At 956 though, which is an hour and 15 minutes later maybe? Yep. Uh, or is that two hours? Two hours. Two hours. Minutes later. Uh, what, who, who contacts who at 956? When they sends Michael Humphrey another message. And what does she say at this point in time? How's it looking? And, and do, you, do you believe that means something? Of some yeah, sense? like when are you going to be here, basically? And at 10, is there a response that's given before 1028? No. But literally at 1028 calls somebody, correct? Yes, Michael Humphrey. And they speak for how long? Three minutes. And then at 10.30, does Lindley receive a call? Yes. From whom? Michael Humphrey. And how long do they speak on that occasion? Uh, one minute. And, and when those records say one minute, that doesn't necessarily mean even they spoke for a minute, that just the call came through. Correct. At 10.34, again, Lindley and Ben are back into one of these conversations about how their days are going, correct? Correct. Ben's describing, I guess, doing some weightlifting? Correct. And then there's a phone call from Rachel to, to Lindley at 1038, correct? Correct. But there's also just discussion, again, like spouses, about how their day is going. Correct. This night, you understand the two of them were Two of them, Lindley and Ben, were supposed to do something that evening, correct? Correct. What were they doing? Uh, they were going on a date to watch uh, Wonder Woman. At 1049, is there some first indication this day that there may be a problem with going out to the movie? Yes, yeah, she says she has a, a monster headache. Now, at 1056, does this conversation about this headache basically continue between the two? Yes. And again, there's a, a video sent by Ben to Lindley. Correct. And he references a call also from Chuck. Yep. And you believe this would be the Chuck Thaw we talked about before? Correct. At 1117, there's a couple of messages sent from Ben to Lindley. Does it appear that he spoke to Chuck in his Relaying this information now to, to Lindley about their, their financial situation? Yes. And does that conversation continue uh, throughout uh, a the next few minutes? Yes. Up till 1219, the two of them appear to be just having, again, one of these standard husband-wife conversations. Correct. Uh, at 1240, is a call placed by Lindley to someone? Yep, Michael Humphrey. And how long do the two of them speak? Two minutes. Her next activity is to send a Facebook message to her husband, correct? Correct. And what is she also, does she have a complaint during this message? She does. What is that? Again, about the headache. And at 1249, uh, she asked Ben what? It's not a... That, oh, I think, don't you need to sign it? She asked Ben how his day is. And then after that, she has a text conversation with whom? Eric Berman. And back to 116, 
Does Ben respond to her earlier question about how his day is going? Yes. And is he now describing to her information about Robert Leonard, what's going on there, as well as the snakes themselves? Yes. I mean, the sunset ov ovulation has to do with snakes breeding. Correct. Giving birth, I guess. And this conversation continues from Ben to Lindley about uh, some of the some of the snakes. Correct. correct. And and at 134, he, agree, he he indicates that the value of some of these small clutches or groups of snakes is 35 to 45 thousand. Correct. <coughs> And at 134, he kind of ends this conversation a little bit uh, before it's interrupted again with from Ben to Lindley about the same conversation. Correct. Because at 136, Lindley again texts who? Michael Humphrey. And what does she ask him? Are you on your, on your way? And at one at about the same time, Ben Ben again responds to her complaining about the deal with Robin and money. Correct. Starting on this slide at 137, Ben and Lindley are getting, Ben's basically saying, I'm getting back to business kind of thing. Correct. Who does she call at 139? Michael Humphrey. And they speak for how long? Two minutes. And again, there's a, a text conversation between her and Eric Bremer. And then a Facebook message is sent to, from Ben to Lindley about, about what? Uh, trying to figure out why $200 came out of their account. And Lindley's again texting with Eric. I should back up. Yes. <clears throat> Lindley at 154 calls who? Rachel Hunt. And they speak for a few minutes? Yep. And then she calls whom? Ashley Shaw. And then there's a Facebook message from Lindley to Ben at 2. Correct. And what is she doing there? Telling them what the withdrawal was. In response to his earlier question. Correct. <laughs> and basically, he then says, hey, that's okay, just check it. Yep. Uh, at 2.04, Ben sends a message to Lindley, correct? Correct. And what does he tell her at 2.04? Uh, that he can't stop looking at nude photos that she had sent him. And. I don't, you, did you see, new, when you were looking through these records, nude photos that she apparently has sent him? Yes. These are new photos of who? Of uh, Lindley. And apparently, you know, they're married, but they got a date night. They're going to be alone without the kids that night, correct? Correct. <laughs> and do they continue talking uh, about this? Yes. This sending, and she, in fact, does she send him at 227 more photos? Yes. And he's kind of thanking her for them. Correct. And uh, seems appreciative of it. Correct. And they continue this conversation, basically he's indicating how distracting it is from work and stuff like that. Correct. At 2.35, uh, what does Lindley message to Ben? Uh, she says, I fucking love you too. I unfortunately can't hang out naked all day in a room, but I will find time another day. And this conversation somewhat continues, and Ben asks her, though, at 2.37, a question. Yes, he asks how her head is. And does she tell him? Uh, she says she, it's basically still bad, and she's getting ready to take more medication. And he, he, he responds what? Fuck, get it better. Basically, he's wanting to have a good time with his wife that evening. Correct. <clears throat> At 3.45, Ben messages Lindley what? Uh, he asks if, if she is going to pick up the kids or if he needs to. And this, at 3.45, this would have been, well, let's back up a little bit. I should have asked you that question. I'm sorry. Uh, there, there's a gap beginning in communication from Lindley to, to anyone for a period of time beginning here. Correct. There is a message sent, but the investigation shows who sent that message. Ashley Shaw. And what, what, is this the period of time where Lindley and Michael have left the spa and left her phone behind? Yes. 
And we know that because we went through this. We asked about the gas. Objection, Your Honor, that invades the province of the jury. I think it does, Judge. I'm well, asking about the evidence. conclusions that are up to the jury and not, and not the state. Well, I, I suppose you could preface it, but based on the state's yeah, that's where submission. I was, that's know. where I was going, Judge. Okay. <clears throat> so why don't you rephrase your question? Instead of saying we know, it's, there, there's some evidence from the bank records as to what time a transaction occurred at that gas station we just talked about. Correct. Correct. And so at 345, whoops, hit it one too many times. At 345, while Wimley and Michael are driving out to the fake snake facility, Ben messages Wimley, correct? Correct. And, and what does he ask her? Uh, if she's going to pick up the children or if he needs to. And in response to that, someone uses, and do you know who is using Ashley or Wimley's account to respond back? Ashley Shaw. And she responds what? Uh, I, need, I need you to. I'm not going to be able to leave right now. Then there aren't any more conversations or text messages after that, that time period from Ben at all. Correct. And you wouldn't have expected him to be on his social media accounts after that time, would you? No. Why not? He's dead. At 513, though, Lindley, or Lindley sends a text message to Ben, correct? Correct. And, and what does she say? Uh, it says, hey, love, I need to stop and get gas, then home. I'll text Catherine and let her know to come at like 545 so you don't have to wait with her and the kids for me. And then her next text messages are with Catherine Fox? Correct. At 525, would Lindley and Michael have still been together? Uh, Physically together? I think they would have probably just left. Does Lindley send Michael a text message? Yes. And what does she say to him? I uh, hope your car, is, I think it should be got you back safe, probably needs more work, haha. -ha. And one of the reasons you think the word got should be in there, she, she includes it next, like she left it out. Yep. And does Michael respond a few minutes later? He does. What does he say? Uh, yeah, almost home. Still has a loose feel and vibrating, but hasn't fallen off. And the alternator seems to be charging solidly, so that's a plus. And at 535, Lindley continues his conversation. Yes. And, and what do they talk, talk about? Or what does she say? Uh, basically, she's saying, uh, try again tomorrow. Or no, that's from Michael, sorry. Uh, they're basically they're talking about uh, setting up a, an appointment for a massage to the following day. Was that part of the cover story? Is that why he was at the spa that they get a cover story? Correct. I'm I'm getting getting a lack of personal knowledge. <clears throat> lack of what now? Lack of personal knowledge, Your Honor. The witness doesn't have sufficient information to know that. Well, I don't know whether he does or not. I assume he well, knows could, his case. Could there be a foundation in that thing? Well, from your investigation, were you, were you made aware of what these individuals said about that day and why they were together? Okay, yes. let's do this for the record. I'm going to sustain foundation. Now you're asking a foundational question, correct? Yes, I'm sorry, Judge. I okay, so I'm sustaining his objection, lay a foundation, and that's what you're doing, right? Yes, sir. Ask a question again. I don't think you... I'm sorry. I was I was asking you, sir, from the investigation, were you aware that there that whether these individuals had a story about why they were together on the day of the murder? Yes. And what was that? Michael was getting a massage. And so now they're discussing having gotten this massage. Correct. Do you believe these text messages are genuine? No. What do you believe they are? Uh, an alibi. And at 535, Lindley receives a text message from what does he say? Uh, maybe try this again tomorrow if this temperamental bitch is on a good day or whenever you got that doesn't affect biz. And, and again, this try tomorrow you believe is a massage, not a, yet another murder. Correct. And at 540, does Lindley respond? Yes. What does she say? Yeah, that works. I could do an 11 or any time between 1 and 4. So she's happy to see him the next day. Correct. And give him another massage. Yep. Uh, at 540, 
Lindley places another phone call to, or places a phone call to the babysitter, correct? Correct. At 5.45, Lindley receives a call from Immaculate Conception School, correct? Correct. And what, what's Immaculate Conception School's role in this? Uh, they're kind of, that's where her children are at, where Ben was asking if he needed to pick them up earlier. And the school calls her, and from your investigation, you know she now needs, she now finds out she's supposed to pick up the kids because Ben did. Correct. And in response to that, does she begin calling various <coughs> locations, it appears, where she thinks Ben might be? Yes. And she does that at 545, she calls the Snake Facility. Correct. And at 546, she calls Ben Cell. Correct. 548, she sends a Facebook message, and what does that say? Uh, I just got a call from the school that Maddie and Emma are still there. Are you on your way? And, and at 548 again, she calls the babysitter. Correct. At 549, she continues these calls to the snake facility, correct? Correct. And at 550, does she send another message uh, via Facebook to Ben? She does. And what does she say in this message? Uh, at least call me back. <clears throat> Excuse me. At least call me back, please. I called Catherine and told her to hold off on coming. And at 551, whoops, 551, she sends another call to his cell phone. Correct. And at 552, sends yet another Facebook message to Lindley, from Lindley to Ben. Correct. And it says what? Uh, if you're on the phone with Robin, call him back and call me. And she adds how many exclamation points? Two. She calls the snake facility at 559 again? Correct. At six o'clock, she calls the cell phone again? Correct. And at, six, at 601, another Facebook message. And what is that Facebook message? Uh, starting to worry a little, love. Please call me back. And again, how many exclamation points? Two. Lindley places two more calls to Rennick Reptile, correct? Correct. And while her husband is allegedly dead on the floor, at 617 she begins texting with one of her lovers, correct? Correct. And she continues that text conversation, both of them sending and receiving. Correct. At 620, in response to her prior conversation with Michael, she sees a response when she offers to give him a massage the next day from Michael, correct? Correct. What does he say? Uh, he says, right on, gotta help the neighbor and maybe do another look over on the beast. I'll let you know in the morning. Thanks again for all the help, as well to your girls. Have a good evening. As always, message if you want to. And she continues then texting with her lover. Correct. And Lindley responds to Michael, does she not? Yep. And what does she say? Uh, it's no problem at all. Just happy you weren't stranded. I'll talk to you tomorrow's. And the conversation with her lover, Eric Bremer, continues. Correct. And we are now at 626 while this conversation continues. Yes. And we know at 631 she places a phone call, correct? Correct. To whom? Sam. Reporting what? Uh, that Ben is dead. And that is what this, 631 is that call? Correct. At 633, she makes it out, according to her record, to 633, call to 911. Correct. And then she calls, do you know who the Gallatins are at 645? Her dad. And she receives a call back. Correct. Teresa Flippick is, is called that night. Correct. Do you, do you know who Teresa might be? I think it's just a friend. Well, do you remember her, there was a flippic that knew something about the snakes and came to help out? Yep. And at 7.34, she begins, or she texts to Eric Bremer. Correct. And she receives a call from Charles Saul, the fellow we talked about before. Correct. And she calls, makes a series of calls and text messages, does she not? Yes. And her last co contact that night is with Eric Bremer and her father, or yep. her home. Yep. Your Honor, I don't, or, Your Honor, I don't have any other questions for- Okay, Cross. Okay for, 
Cooper, good afternoon. Um, you were not at the uh, Division of Drug and Crime Control on uh, the date of Ben's murder, correct? Correct. Where, in what capacity were you employed on that day? Road trooper. What? A road trooper. Okay. When did you come to the uh, Division of Drug and Crime Control? So I did an internship, uh, I believe November of 2017. Um, and then I got into the unit uh, the 1st of February of 2018. Now, you became at some point the lead investigator on this case. Correct. Is a lead investigator the same thing as a case agent? Correct. What are the uh, responsibilities of a lead investigator trooper? Uh, basically, the lead investigator is responsible for um, keeping track of the investigation, the direction of the invest investigation. Um, when leads come up, they will issue, they'll either take care of them th themselves or they'll give them to other people, uh, delegate, so that stuff gets done. And then they make sure that the people who do leads for them write the reports and that they get into the case file. So, in a sense, it's your job to make sure all the relevant information is found? Correct. And it's your job to disclose all the significant facts in the reports so that, so that the jury can uh, see it during trial? Correct. And uh, you, uh, you agree that you have to dis disclose facts that uh, even oppose a, a theory of the highway patrol so that the jury can see those facts too? Correct. Um, now, is it fair to say that Devin Foss left the uh, DDCC unit unexpectedly? Or is that not fair to say? He's still in DDCC. Okay. At some point, are you aware of him leaving um, that particular investigation unit that you were in? Yes. Okay. Now, when he left and he went to the bomb squad. Correct. Um, would you characterize his leaving um, and going to the bomb the bomb squad as an unexpected uh, transition? Mm. <clears throat> Not really. Okay. But he did leave and go to the bomb squad. Correct. And uh, after he did that you took over and became the case agent or lead investigator um, for the Rennick homicide. Correct. Uh, and you did that automatically. What do you mean by automatically? Well, nobody specifically assigned you to the Rennick investigation. No. Okay. You were never uh, called in for a meeting and a supervisor said, um, asked you if you wanted to uh, become the lead investigator. That's actually exactly how it works. Okay. And so um, you then, I guess, became lead investigator. Um, well, 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 was there anybody else that, uh, um, well, I'll withdraw the question. I'll, I'll move on. Um, so when did you become the uh, lead investigator? When Devin left. When was that? I don't know the date. You... Did you write a report? No. Um, is your becoming a lead investigator a significant um, event in the life of the uh, Rennick investigation? I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say yes. Do you remember taking a deposition around May of this year, Trooper? Yep. I'm sorry? Yes. Okay. Um, do you remember describing in that deposition that when you came on the unit, the case was cold? Possibly. Okay, when you say possibly, does that mean you do remember or don't remember? If it's in there, the, I mean, you have the transcript, so if it says it, then I said it. Do you remember saying whether the case was cold or not? I don't recall. Okay. <clears throat> please uh, take that, please. Can you please review the top of that um, transcription page? And then when you're done, hand it back to me. 
just the top, or what do you want me to read? Read the top. Did you finish? Yep. Do you, does that help you remember whether or not you describe the case as cold to another individual? Well, in that, you asked if I described it as cold to Brandon, and yes, I did. And I also described it as cold to Ashley, but there was a reason behind describing it as cold for the investigation. Did you not also say that there hadn't been any substantial leads in the rent case in a year and a half? Yes. And I'm going to suggest that you took over the case in April of 2019. Does that sound sure. correct? When you took over, now you're allowed now to make your own decisions and act independently with the rent case, right? I think you're being overly vague. Like, I don't work by myself. We are a unit and everything goes through my supervisor. So I'm not making calls just, it's not me by myself making all of the calls. It's a unit and my supervisor has say. Lindley wasn't arrested when you took over the unit. Obviously. Is that a yes? Yes. Um, but you considered her the main suspect still? Based on the evidence, yes. Now, um, when you sat for your deposition in May, did you, do you remember me asking you if you, were, if you ever spoke to um, Brian Higginbotham? I don't recall. Do you recall me asking you if you ever spoke to a woman named Caitlin Church? I don't recall. Do me a favor, Trooper, and look at, uh, Lines 14 through 23 for me on that deposition transcript. Okay. Don't you say in that deposition transcript that the name Caitlin Church doesn't sound familiar? Yep. And don't you say that um, you don't believe that you ever spoke to Brian Higginbotham? Correct. Wasn't um, there a Montgomery police report in the file that Caitlin Church stated that Brian Higginbotham might be involved? That's possible. If you, I'll take your word for it. Didn't you say that you reviewed the entire case file? I did. Now, do you remember me asking you if you knew if Lenny Rennick had a criminal history? You probably did. Do you remember what your answer to that was? Mm, I don't believe so. Do you remember me asking you if um, Lenny Rennick had any firearms training? I don't. Do you remember what your answer was to that? Probably, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Do you uh, remember me asking you what a Vichy shower is? Probably. And do you remember what your answer was to that? Mm, I probably had no clue at that time, or maybe I did. I don't know. Well, at the depot, I would have known. Okay. Well. You're saying you would have known what the Vichy shower was by the time we got I would assume so. <clears throat> would you please review line five and six of that transcript, please? Do I ask you if you know what a Vichy shower is? You do. And what's your response? Uh, at first I say I have no idea, and then you said that that was the shower at the Accenture Spa, and I said, okay, yes. You would agree that having no idea what a Vichy shower is is not the same thing as you probably knowing what a Vichy shower is, correct? I would say I probably didn't know the terminology for it, but I knew what it was. Did you ever see this Vichy shower? Nope. Now, do you remember me uh, asking you if Lenly, if you knew if Lenly ever had a panic attack and had a I didn't hear you. I'm sorry? I can't hear you. Okay. Um, I'll start over. Do you remember me asking you if you knew whether or not Lenly had a panic attack and had to be hospitalized following the murder? Yeah, I think I said I didn't know that. Okay. 
Um, and you remember me asking you if you ever talked to a gentleman named Leandre Robinson? No. Does it say there that, that did you ever talk to an individual named Leandre Robinson? Yes. And what's your response? I'm not sure. Wasn't Leandre Robinson the person that was supposed to get Ashley Shaw the, the Percocet pills? Yep. Why didn't you go interview Leandre Robinson? I don't know. Um, do you remember me asking you who Mike Scarlett was? I don't recall. Would you please review lines um, 16 through 19? Okay. Um, do you... Don't I ask there, are you, are you aware, do you know who Mike Scar Scarlett is? You do. And what's your answer? I don't. Do you know if I ask you if you're aware that Mike Scarlett heard a, heard a gunshot and if he's aware that Mike Scarlett heard a woman scream followed by a gunshot on 6-8? Yeah, I just saw it. Okay, and what was your answer to that question? Same thing, I don't, I did not know. Okay. Now, do you remember me asking you if um, you saw Devin, or if, excuse me, whether or not Devin saw Lenley throwing up outside of the courthouse on 6-8? I don't recall it, but I didn't know that. Okay. Um, do you remember me asking you if an individual named Brandon Blackwell told Devin Faust that he was 110% sure that Lenley did not kill Ben? Yes. And what was your answer to that? If I remember that, I don't think I, I don't remember what my answer was. Okay. I want you to read uh, lines 9 through 25 in that page. Okay. So uh, did I ask you that question if Brandon Blackwell said? You did. Okay. And what ultimately was your answer? If it's in his report, that's what he said. Well, keep going. What does it say out eventually? After mm. we're done dodging the question. Says I'm not sure. And did I not also ask you if um, Brandon Blackwell wrote a letter to Judge Schneider telling her that he had extensive memory loss? I believe he did. And what was your answer to that? Not sure. And uh, did I ask you if um, uh, Lenley Rennick's family law attorney had filed an order of child custody on Brandon Blackwell while he was incarcerated in the Boone County Jail? Uh, probably. And what was your answer to that? I think I knew about that possibly. I don't, I don't recall. Well, did you know about it or did you not know about it? Well, show me the depot and I'll tell you. attention to line 12 through 15. Do I ask you if you're aware if uh, a child custody petition was served on uh, Brandon Blackwell? Yep. And what's your answer? No. And um, you never talked to an individual named Jeff Arzola? What was the name? Jeff Arzola. No, I don't believe so. And uh, you never 
pulled Ashley Shaw's phone records uh, for the time of the uh, murder, correct? No. Or her bank records? No. And you never went to the Ascentia Spa while it was open? You may have on, on the 22nd, or did you not? I went after it was closed and was okay. owned by another beauty company. Okay. Um, did you ever speak to a woman named Brittany Bishop? I have no idea. Did you ever speak to a woman named Becca Highland? I don't believe so. Um, you spoke, do you know how many um, spa employees there were at Essentia Spa? I think maybe four or five, I'm not sure. Okay. How many uh, spa employees did you talk to? I talked to Ashley Shaw and I talked to Rachel Hunt. Okay. And you didn't talk to any other co, co, co workers? I don't believe so. Now, do you recall, you said you reviewed the um, file in, in, entirely, right? Correct. That would include all the interviews uh, with Lenny, right? Correct. Do you recall um, uh, Master Sergeant Reynolds telling Lenny that the spa was the most important thing to her besides her kids? I don't recall him saying that specifically, but you said it earlier, so I'll take your word for it. Okay. Um, so that would mean that in order, in, that would mean that for Lenley to kill Ben, she would have to take Emma's father from her. I don't understand the question. So if Lenley chose to kill Ben, she would also be necessarily making the same decision to remove Ben from his own daughter's life. Correct. Even though... Len, even though Ben's daughter and Lenley's daughter are one of the most important things, according to Sergeant Reynolds, in Lenley's life. Okay. Okay, what? Do you have a question? Did you ever consider why Lenley would kill Ben if her children were so important to her and her children's feelings were so important to her? To her? And her children's what? feelings were so important to her? Did you ever consider that? I guess, uh, I don't know. You always wonder why people kill people and it hurts other people, but people do stupid stuff all the time. So I guess I don't understand what you're asking. You're aware that Ben didn't have a will, right? No. Okay. Um, you're, uh, and you're aware that the trust funds don't, did, did not go to Len, or did not go to Lenley. They went to Ben's descendants, right? Correct. Okay. And, uh, I, do you remember me asking you, um, what determines where funds that are held inside the trust go? I don't recall you asking that. your attention to line 7 through 11. Do I not say there what determines in a trust who gets the funds that are held within the trust? Yep. What? Yes. And uh, isn't your answer whatever is written in the trust and, and the trustee ultimately? Correct. attention trooper to first of all you wrote a summary of investigation in this case right correct that was the end of your investigation after Lenny was arrested you want to see it well it wasn't the end okay. there was stuff done after so like because there were still interviews uh, I believe Rachel Hunt was possibly interviewed after the the summary was written so it doesn't a case summary doesn't end and actually the patrol has gotten away from case summaries because of that. The case summary used to be for, it's basically a synopsis of what has happened 
in the case. That is um, interesting. I just want to know if this is a summary of your investigation. Okay. Is that, I mean, that's what it's Let me see it. This part would be my summary. This part is uh, notes of, I don't believe they're mine. Okay. Well, would you please go to, uh, hmm, I'll just. On page two, paragraph F, I want to draw, I'm going to put a little dot on it so you can see it. Read that sentence to the jury. It says, Thal stated he was also the trustee of Benjamin's life insurance policy of $1 million, and Lindley was a sole beneficiary. Uh, keep going all the way That's through. That's fine. Okay. Um, the trustee is in charge of trust funds, correct? I guess, yeah. And you write that Charles Saw is the trustee of the life insurance policy for one for one million dollars. Okay. And the trust document says that Emma gets the assets from the trust fund, right? Okay. Wouldn't that seem to suggest that the life insurance policy was transferred to the trust fund? Perhaps, I don't know. Isn't one of the main points of your case that Lenny was going to get this really big million dollar life insurance policy? I don't think that's a main point of the case. I think uh, that is part of, but I think the evidence huh. is the main point of the case. Huh, I must have missed that. And, uh, I think you testified that Ben was supposed to get $1.5 million um, from Robin Le Lenner. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and that deal didn't go through after Ben died, right? I think some of it did, but not all of it. Are you sure? I'm, I'm not sure. I said I think. Okay. Um, now, are you aware also that Ben was uh, about to breed a special anaconda called a T-positive gene anaconda? Yes. And do you know how much each one of those T-positive gene anacondas was supposed to be worth? Nope. If I were to say $25,000, would that sound correct? Sure. And those snakes weren't hatched also because Ben died, right? I have no idea. So Lenly lost quite a bit of money by Ben passing away. Wouldn't you agree? Lost? No. Now, did you see the uh, part in uh, the interview of Ashley Shaw on 10-6 where she was interviewed by um, Corporal Haslag? What do you mean, did I see the part? Did you review the transcript? I probably have, yes. Okay. Well then, did you review the part where um, Ashley Shaw, Shaw said she would be totally shocked if Lenny Rennick had anything to do with Ben's murder? Yes. Did you read um, a supplemental report in which um, Eric Bremer said he would be shocked if Lindley committed the murder? Yes. 
and that she's the nicest person I've ever met? Yes. And that he says, like I've always felt, I left every interaction with her feeling better about who I was? Sure. I, I don't remember that, but he probably said it. And do you remember Chuck Thaw freely stating that he did not believe Lenny Rennick would be capable of being involved in Benjamin Rennick's murder? Yes. Do you remember Sam Rennick stating that he didn't think Lenny Rennick would be involved in Ben's murder? Yes. Do you remember Rachel Hunt stating that she did not believe that Lenny Rennick could be involved in Ben's murder? Yes. And are you aware that um, Brian McGowan, the Montgomery County deputy, wrote in his report that he thought, that he wrote that Lenny was crying hysterically on the night of Ben's murder? I don't recall that, but he probably wrote it. And um, do you recall that Amanda Lee Har Harlan and Gracie Harlan said that they heard Sam on the phone with somebody who was screaming bloody murder? Do you remember re reading that? Probably. <clears throat> Do you remember um, Lendl Gallatin saying that Lenny was completely <coughs> tore up? Excuse me for a second. Just a Your food's here, okay? <laughs> so you're, you're, we're not gonna let that go bad, so we're gonna come back with this gentleman after you all are done eating, okay? All right, again, I remind you not to talk about the case or form or express anything about it until it's finally given to you to decide you can go back and eat with the bailiff, okay? All right, please. And you can go ahead and step down. That may be overly optimistic, but that's usually, I mean, all they're doing now is just going back there, eating, and then they'll be done. So if you can grab something, is that okay with you? 30 minutes work for you guys? Okay, all right. 